Hello everyone. Good morning. If it's morning where you are, it is here. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful day. I'm looking out the window and I can just see blue skies and just a few wispy clouds. I hope it's nice where you are too. <laughs> my name is Laura and this is my YouTube channel and it's called I Heart Knitting. And it's all about knitting today. Today's actually all about the socks. So um, if you're looking for me online, everywhere else on the interwebs, I am I Heart You, and that's spelled E-W-E, -E, like a sheep. So that's the name of my Etsy shop, and that is my Instagram handle. And then on Ravelry, I am I Heart You Knits. If you want to check out projects there and get some more info, I try and keep that fairly up to date with yarn and sizing and things like that in case I miss something here. I know I'm a little scattered and not always the best at giving you all the info you need. So of course if Ravelry is an issue for you, you can always comment down below or send me a message somewhere else if you have questions. I would be happy to answer those for you if you are not able to get onto Rev. So yeah, that is where you can find me in the world. Uh, if this is your first time here, thank you for checking this channel out. Um, please give it a like if you're enjoying it and, you know, hit me a comment if you have anything to add. Um, really helps me out here. I really appreciate the viewers that I have. I really appreciate y'all coming back. Um, yeah, I didn't want to say this at the beginning actually, but I'm already into it. So, um, not to complain or anything, but you know, my YouTube views have been not as great as they were previously. I'm really trying to get consistent. Um, but I feel like no matter what I do, it's, uh, it's just not really changing anything. So, um, I do really appreciate the people who are watching and I know there are you people out there who are watching every week and by no means am I complaining um, because this channel grew very very quickly at the beginning and I was not expecting that um, but I just feel like I've hit a little bit of a plateau here so if you want to um, you know leave a comment that really helps and interact with the channel and uh, if you have anything that you'd like me to be doing in the future um, or any suggestions for me, I would definitely appreciate that. So yeah, so today is going to be all about hand knit socks. I've got um, a finished object to show you. I'm going to do a little bit of a whip down and then um, I'm also going to show you this is my personal box of socks and this is what I pull from. You know this is on my dresser and this is they're my socks <laughs> so I'm gonna show you that as well um, oh that was the other thing I wanted to mention to you um, kind of going along with you know if you have any suggestions for me I started a knit along and announced it in the last uh, video uh, and it's called the summer vacay cal and it's on Instagram it's a very loose rules cal where um, if you'd like to join along and knit with me this summer, I'm gonna run it until the end of August. And um, essentially you can basically do whatever you want. I just want you guys to kind of join and play along with me. So um, post your photo on Instagram with the summer vacay cal tag. I will put that down below, you know, proper spelling and everything, um, as well as my link tree where you can find me on the internet. Um, but yeah, the idea of that is to either post your kind of staycation slash vacation knitting photos. So, you know, if you're out on your deck with, you know, a nice beverage and working on your knitting, you know, snap a photo of that and add the hashtag. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put some prizes together and um, so far nobody has entered on Instagram. So I'm slightly, I'm not discouraged, but um, I think I'm just not doing a very good job at getting the info out there. So if you think that that's something that interests you, if you'd like to win some prizes, I usually send yarn and something handmade from my shop. 
Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for prizes this time, but uh, if that interests you, please join along and uh, maybe you can add your photos to the hashtag because I've got my two lonely pictures there right now. Um, yeah, so anyways, let's get into it here. First thing I want to show you is a finished object that you haven't even seen yet because I finished the whole thing in about three days. <laughs> so I grabbed some leftover self-striping yarn and held it double with like a kind of like a neutral white yarn. It actually has speckles of green and a little bit of black in it. Uh, if you have been watching for a while, the white is the yarn that I used for our Halloween knit along. Um, white with like a little bit of green so I don't know if you remember those I posted them here and on Instagram they had like gray heels cuffs and toes so I had about 50 grams of that left and I also had about 50 grams of this self-striping um, left over from a pair of socks I had made previously that you'll see in a few minutes actually and yeah I wanted to use up the yarn but I didn't necessarily want to make the same self-striping socks over again and so I just kind of had this like inspiration moment where I realized that you know if I could find another yarn and hold it double it would just create this really cool gnarled effect and I got so excited about these right away I cranked out the first sock in like probably two or three days and then um what day was it Sunday I basically just sat and um knit all day which was awesome <laughs> and I knit the entire sock in one day so these go pretty fast with the yarn held double I would really recommend this especially if you're trying to use up some of those larger scrap balls or you know if you have 50 gram skeins uh, if you're looking for a quick gift for someone these are super super fun um, I think you know the I did the um, what do you call it I did the turned Heel, the heel flap and gusset that's what you call it and uh, sometimes I do DK socks for gifts but I think I'm gonna have to keep these because I don't actually have my own pair of these yet I made a couple pairs of um, thicker slipper socks in uh, the winter time but I ended up giving those away so really excited about those I used uh, 3.75 millimeter needles and I cast on 44 stitches and that is for my foot size which is about a seven and a half to an eight they're really quick they're really satisfying um, they're like I think they're a great weight they're not too thick so I might grab some more scraps and see if I can put together another combo like that because that combo was just perfect so yeah that was a really quick project you didn't even I didn't even have a chance to show it to you as a work in progress here before it was finished but those are the best projects sometimes you know sometimes they just grab you uh, and then I started another project recently this is in one of my um, sock size this is the rectangular sock size bag um, from my shop and I started a pair of socks here Gosh. Oh, Laura, what a mess. There we go. So I started this pair of socks. Uh, actually, when I went camping the other night, I cast these on on the beach and knit the cuff and just a few rounds of the actual leg here. But uh, yeah, I love this yarn. I grabbed it out of my stash. It is Hedgehog Fibers. It's their twist sock. Um, so there's their labels have changed since I bought this but if you need the information so hedgehog fibers this is their twist sock so their twist sock is different very different from their other sock yarn it is 80% BFL blue face Lester and 20% nylon and it is 365 meters um, to 100 grams so just I think that would probably be about 400 yards I think and I'm gonna be 
honest, I don't love Hedgehog's original sock yarn. I have some of it. I've knit socks with it. It's not about the wear. It's just more about the knitting process with it. I find it kind of splitty and uh, it's just a little thinner than most sock yarns, you know, that I'm used to working with kind of of that yardage. So if you're the same as me, I would really recommend checking out the um, Twist Sock by Hedgehog Fibers. I really like it. I have another pair of socks to show you out of the Twist Sock um, in my sock box here. And, you know, BFL is, it's not maybe as soft as Merino. It takes the dye a little differently. It, you get a little bit of a kind of a fuzzy halo on it, but it's really hard wearing. And um, I really like the Twist that they have on it. It's a two ply. I'm not sure if you'll be able to kind of see that with my face in the way here, but um, no, that's not going to work. But I really prefer, I prefer this yarn to their original Hedgehog Fibers sock. So I think in the future, because I love the colors that Hedgehog Fibers dyes, I will just look for their BFL base rather than their original Merino sock base, because I know for me, I prefer it. Um, yeah, so I will be able to actually compare in a few minutes. I can show you the two Hedgehog Fibers bases side by side, and you can kind of see the differences between them. So yeah, cast those on. Very happy with those. I actually hand rolled the ball. I just shoved it in my backpack before we left the house and um, hand rolled the ball uh, on the beach as well, <laughs> just for something to do and cast those on. So I think those are going to kind of be my like, I might bring those along as like my camping project when we're uh, going out and about. It's kind of fun to have a project that comes along on adventures with you in the summer, you know? Um, and then I've showed you these before. I haven't done much work on these. This is just a Gage Dye Works um, skein that didn't really stripe out the way I was expecting, but I'm gonna finish these cool color block socks. They're gonna be dark gray on the toe. So I've only, only started that one and haven't done much work on that. Another sock I have on the needles, the yarn is by uh, To The Max Yarn Co. There's the ball band. Uh, to The Max Yarn Co. out of Alberta. And this is their fingering weight sock. And there's no colorway on the label, but it was um, something to do with cigarillo or tobacco rose or something they had a whole collection and these kind of like nice like mustardy brownie colors so these are going to be for my husband i started these a long time ago but i really haven't done much on them um just had other things on the go they are um we started with 75 stitches and i did knit two purl one rib on the top and then um, increase to, or increase, no, I decrease to 74. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> to get the, uh, to get the multiple of four. Um, I'm really second guessing myself now. It's 76, I think. Yeah, because 60 plus 16 is 76. Okay, so 70, I'm gonna increase to 76 stitches so that I can turn the heel with the proper number of stitches. Anyways, very complicated way of saying that I needed a multiple of three to do my ribbing and now I need a multiple of four to finish my socks. Um, so yeah, these will be standard for John. He doesn't like his leg too long, so I'll just knit a couple inches of the leg. And um, I have a really nice green yarn to go with it for the heels. Uh, and then what else do I have left? Two more to show you quickly, which you've seen before. This is um, my attempt, my first attempt at knitting on the little nine inch circular needles. These are Chowgu nine inch circulars. And it's really a struggle for me with the nine inch circulars, but I'm trying to get better with them. So every now and again, I pick this up and I do some rounds. And despite me saying that I haven't you know, really successfully worked on these very much. I'm almost at the heel turn. So I think the nine inch circulars are just like a slightly different motion, but they're fast. I think they are fast. Just all that, um, 
all that rearranging when you're knitting on magic loop, which is normally what I do, I guess it does take up time where with this, you're just kind of going around and around and around. That yarn is another yarn by the Fawn Knits. It's a sparkle base. It has gold stellina in it, um, but that's kind of deep stash. I've had that for a long time. And then these guys, which I haven't finished up yet, are my stripy socks for the stripy socks cal I did in April. So I should probably get going on these. This is the first one and I just kind of like failed at it. I was having a lot of fun. And then I got distracted by another pair of striping socks that I wanted to finish as a gift for my friend. So I got to get back to these. I actually forgot about them until I was digging around in, um, we have like in our living room, we have like our ottoman that we put our feet up on. And then it's one of the ones that opens up and has storage inside. And that's where I keep all my whips. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's in this bag. Oh, right those socks I haven't finished. <laughs> so I'll get back to those eventually. Um, yeah, so that's my sock whip down. I have one, two, three, four, I have five pairs of socks on the go in various stages. I don't think any of them are on the second sock, which is bad. No, none of them are on the second sock. So I got to get moving on at least one of those and, uh, get myself to the second sock. So I feel like I'm making some progress because I don't think it's good to have five whips that are all, you know, in their early stages like that. <laughs> but I really like having sock whips always. I like having a bunch of socks on the go. Um, they're just great little portable projects, especially for the summertime. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see how many of those I can get off the list by the end of the year. So yeah, so I just wanted to, I don't know if I'm going to go deep into this because these are a lot of socks, you guys, but I do want to quickly, not quickly, I do want to show you some of the things I've knit over the years because I'm, I really love my socks and I work hard on them and I'm really proud of them. So um, I keep them in this wooden crate. It's one of those cheap wooden crates that you can get off of, um, you know, like a craft store. I got mine at my local hardware store. And what I did is I just stained it with like a dark stain that I had sitting around the house and then um, sprayed it with some clear coat, which I also had around the house just to protect it. And then I put these little felt sticky things on the bottom so that it doesn't mess up my dresser top. And it's a great storage basket. I think all in all the project cost me the cost of the crate, which I think was about like under $10. So uh, it's a really nice storage. And I think it looks really nice once you stain it out, um, those pine crates from the craft store. So I have quite a few self-striping socks. Maybe I will quickly go through those first. I often knit my self-striping socks extra long so that I can use up all of the yarn I'm not sure why I do that. Like, I feel like, um, I feel like I'm wasting it <laughs> if I don't use it all. So I'm not sure what that's about, but, uh, a lot of times I will do my self-striping socks, especially with like the, these are Nitpicks Felici. Uh, I'm not sure what colorway, but, uh, especially with the Felici or something like that, that's already broken up into two fifty gram balls. Um, I will start at the toe and do a toe up sock and then just keep going until basically I run out of yarn. Um, and then, you know, I have bigger calves, so I'm not sure if you can see here, but I actually do some increases along the back of the heel here just to give my calves some extra room. Um, so these are a toe up pattern with a gusset and heel flap which is really fun to do the opposite way if you've never done it before. And I always use this free pattern that I got from Pearl Soho and it's for a pair of knee-high socks. They're called Little Cable Knee-High Socks and they're free on Pearl Soho's website. Um, but I often will just use that recipe and omit the cables. So you should definitely check out that if you're looking for a, something different, a toe-up sock with still the gusset and the heel. 
so as I said, this is Nitpicks Felici. Um, these are pretty heavily worn, but they're wearing pretty well. Um, I'm going to get probably at least one more year out of these before they start to get thin on the bottom of the feet. And I knit on 2.25 millimeter needles now because I find they make a more durable sock for me and they're more comfortable to wear um, long term. So yeah, so Nitpicks Felici is a big favorite of mine. These are also Nitpicks Felici in a very similar style except I've done the um, fish lips kiss heel on this and these ones are a little less worn I would say than the other ones you know when I worked I was on my feet like when I worked out of the house I was on my feet all day and I would wear my hand knit socks and my boots so they definitely get a lot of use for me um, but I find that they wear really really well they last me years uh, these ones are super fun. This is a self-striping yarn by the Yarn Therapist. And this is actually a quite an old project, but they're MCN. And I have this thing in my head that they're really special. So I don't wear them when I'm like walking a lot or anything like that. Even though MCN is, you know, it's still fairly durable because it has merino cashmere nylon in it. Um, the cashmere isn't quite as durable as a merino is, but the nylon does help. Um, so yeah, so I don't wear these very often, which is silly because I love them. <laughs> so I think maybe next winter I have to make a point to um, actually wear these because what's the point of having something really nice that you're afraid to put on, right? <laughs> it seems kind of silly to me. So yeah love these love the colors use like a really bright pink for the cuffs and a really bright green for the heels um i think that is a nitpicks stroll neons they had like a bright or like a neon collection a few years ago these ones are very similar design with the fish lips kiss heel and a little longer as well a little bit increasing here at the back of the heel um, this is Blue Moon Fiber Arts Socks That Rock, and I think it's their lightweight, might be their medium weight. No, I think their medium weight's more like a DK, so this is probably their lightweight. I got this yarn when we were down in uh, Oregon, down on the Oregon coast a couple of years ago, which I can't wait to get back to. Um, this is a self-striping yarn by Scrumptious Pearl. And then I have some Gage Dye Works. This is Gage Dye Works in their colorway uh, White Light. And just with like a gray for the heels. Love these. And then another Gage Dye Works. I can't remember the name of these. It was like a colorway, I think, for Knit City a few years ago. I didn't actually go to Knit City, but then they released them afterwards. And so I decided to knit them in mirror images. Um, these ones are like, I knit these when my dad was in the hospital, he was having surgery and, uh, I sat beside his bed and knit these. So it's, I have kind of funny memories attached to those socks, but I still really love them. Um, yeah, next thing I want to show you is the actual pattern for the Pearl Soho Little Cable Knee Highs, and these are tall, friends. I mean, these quite a few years ago. This is Nitpick Stroll. Um, I'm not sure what the colorway is. I didn't keep a Ravelry page up until a couple years ago, um, but I used to put my socks in the dryer, and you can tell that these have been in the dryer because they're a little fuzzy but they're still wearing really well. Um, putting them in the dryer actually probably helped felt them a little bit and made them hard wearing because I think I was still knitting on 2.5 millimeter needles at this point. Um, but yeah, you can see how the Pearl Soho little cable knee high pattern just has this tiny little cable that goes up the back of your leg and uh, increasing on either side and then really tall cuffs that you can roll down. These basically go up to my knee. You will need more than one skein of yarn to do this. You're gonna need at least, I would say 150 grams because they're like, ooh, <laughs> they're really tall. 
but I really love these. I made these quite a few years ago and they've worn really well considering how much I've worn them. Um, this is probably my all-time favorite pair of socks that is on their last legs. These are just plain. Um, this is Knit Pick Stroll Tweed and same thing, took the 50 gram skein and knit toe up until I couldn't knit anymore. And I'm not sure if you can see there, they're getting, they're starting to get very thin uh, along the foot. So I think I've only got about one season left in these before they're going to start to fall apart. When my socks wear out, the entire foot wears out all at once. So I don't usually darn them at that point. I usually just let them go because I've, at that point, I've probably had them for like seven years or so. I knit these quite a long time ago because I remember I was knitting them at a restaurant that has been closed for a long time. So they are not quite as hard wearing as my other socks bec just because of using the 2.5 millimeter needle instead of the 2.5 or 2.25. Um, I find that you really want a nice tight gauge with your socks or they're just not going to wear as well. And then sometimes you can get that um, like cheese grater like you know when you feel like you're walking on on like nets or something when you're like if you <laughs> if you've ever worn fishnet stockings <laughs> at the end of the day that's what it feels like it feels like you're walking on cheese graters and the the yarn can sometimes do that with like a more open gauge it can kind of be uncomfortable for long-term wear um i've got some shorty socks to show you here this is a really cute little pattern from the Sock Yarn One Skein Wonders book. I wonder if I can get this. I think I can get this out off the shelf without knocking things over. Um, I used to use these One Skein Wonder books a lot and this is a really cute pattern. I'm hoping the book will just perfect just open right up to the page. So they're called the Lacy Summer Footlets um, designed by Betsy McCarthy and I've knit a few pairs of these. So I have this pair in the gray. This is Knit Picks Stroll yarn. Um, oh, I should mention, I'm going to have an affiliate link down below for Knit Picks if you're interested in checking out Knit Picks and you want to support the channel. Um, you can click on the link below before you shop and at no cost to you, it will, um, if you buy something through my link, it'll give me like a small commission. I don't think it'll come to anything, but I thought I talk about knit picks all the time, so I might as well link them up there. So this is the same Lacy Summer Footlets pattern in like a neon pink and gray for the little cuff and the toes. And I think I've knit two more pairs of these as gifts as well. They're really fun. They're really cute. Um, Everyone should have a couple pairs of ankle socks, I think. Um, just, you just should, okay? Okay. <laughs> Everyone should have a few different pairs of socks and a few different legs. These are the Jelly Roll socks. This is a pattern by um, Orange Knits. And this is yarn dyed by my friend Rowie. She doesn't dye anymore, but this is like a sparkle yarn that she dyed. And then a purple um, Knit Pick Stroll for the contrast. These are ones that I do wear, but I find I, I probably should have done this ribbing a lot looser. Um, the two color ribbing is like, it's, it's a bit tight on my foot. So I'd like to actually knit another pair of these and maybe um, I think what I'll do is when I'm doing um, the areas with the two color knitting, I will go up a needle size just so there's a little bit more give in the socks. Um, I, this is my first kind of attempt at color work in socks and I didn't really think about how my color work would just give less... Um, elasticity in the foot and it's right across that kind of spot where you sort of don't want it to be too tight that widest part of your foot and then um, these are a pattern by the same designer but these ones are called how I roll so I knit these out of about I think it was five different colors of mini skeins and they have an amazing fade instruction in this pattern I would buy this pattern 
just for the fade instructions because you would never like it's almost impossible to see where the five colors start and end you know you can see the one color here in the toe because it's used all by itself but the the way that the pattern is written it fades so beautifully fun to wear and people always kind of comment on them um yeah so then these are so this is the two hedgehog fibers yarns side by side so this one is the bfl and then this is the original hedgehog fibers which is 90 percent merino and 10 percent nylon and they're beautiful they're soft i really like them uh, like i said it's just the process of knitting with the yarn i don't enjoy quite as much i find it a little bit splitty um so i would if you find that too i would try their bfl sock and then the bfl sock these are the zigzagular socks pattern really fun little kind of zigzag detail that you can put into your foot and they're really fun to knit. I'd like to knit. I don't know if I'll show you every single pair of socks in here, but I want to show you some of the kind of really cool ones. This is Koigu KPPP, KPPPM, <laughs> Koigu Premium Painter's Palette Merino. I think that's what they're called. <laughs> and these are the Speckled Space Sock Pattern. Uh, it's a really fun pattern. I would like to knit another pair of these as well. It's one of those kind of intuitive patterns that once you've done a few rounds of it, you will, um, you'll find it really easy to memorize and they're just really fun for something different. And these ones are a pattern by Mina Phillips. These are quite a few years old now. These are the Driftwood socks and they just have this really nice pearl design across the front and these are knit out of long dog yarn uh, long dog yarn used to be a toronto dyer toronto ontario and now they are a new orleans dyer and this is their colorway dark dimension which is one of my favorite colorways ever love this one um, these are the self-striping yarn socks that i just made the DK socks out of so you can see what a difference adding that white makes it's like a whole other pair uh, these are by the yarn jar and they were a gift from a friend a few years ago um, like I got the not the socks I got the ball of yarn as a gift from one of my knitting friends uh, another great pattern if you're looking for something simple is the cafe latte socks they just have a little pearl design going through them these are knit with the fawn and the fox yarns not sure what the colorway is super fun and then i have another <laughs> pair of cafe latte socks and they're also in the fawn and the fox yarns this one was called i think it was called first date it was a valentine's colorway and uh yeah these have had a fair amount of wear as well and they're wearing really well um, as I said, I don't put my socks in the dryer anymore. I used to, but I do not anymore. <laughs> I would not recommend that. It uh, kind of felts your socks. It's not going to ruin them, but I, I think it's better to, you know, some people hand wash them. I just put them in our washing machine like normal. We have a top loader. Um, and then when I'm pulling out the things that don't go in the dryer, I just pull the socks out and I hang them to dry now. And it works really well. And I've found that, um, since I started doing that, my socks wear a lot better long-term. Um, and then I just pulled out, I think this is all the yarn I have dyed by long dog yarn. Oh no, I have one more. <laughs> Here, I want to show you, because they're all really kind of simple, plain socks, but uh, these are all dyed by Long Dog Yarn. I go through like phases with dyers, and I basically like buy a ton of yarn and stash it away by different people. Um, so this is one of the first ones I bought from them. This colorway is called Pop, and uh, this is like a Christmas colorway. And I think I ordered this um, aqua green or aqua blue to go with it. 
this was like a it was like something about like orange popsicle or popsicle stand or something and this was a set with the coordinating minis um as you can see i do basically like a lot of plain socks and mostly fish lips kiss heels if i'm doing contrast heels um, and then i will occasionally do the heel flap and gusset as well and then this is another Christmas colorway or December colorway. I think it was something to do with like sugar cookies or something like that. And I just love them. This is another Fawn and the Fox colorway. I think it's called Flower Crown. Pretty pinks. Uh, this is Spun Right Round. And this is one of my like unicorn colorways that I ended up getting on a D stash. Oh, and I can't remember the name right now, but I love these ones. So fun. Um, these are on my Ravelry page if you are interested in the colorway, but I'm not sure. Like I said, I was struggling to find them on Spun Right Round's website and uh, I'm not sure how much Renee dyes them anymore but I did find them on someone's D stash and just snapped them up and then um, I've got some yarn ink socks here these are yarn ink um, socks in taffy these socks are pretty old actually uh, you can see they're a little dirty on the bottom and just like a pink coordinating I really like this taffy colorway it's like a minty green over dyed with all these speckles and then these are really special socks. They've faded out a bit because I've used them and worn them quite a lot. But these are really special. I did a collaboration um, quite a few years ago, actually, with Alicia from Yarn Inc. And I made a project bag and we collaborated on fabrics. And then Alicia dyed this yarn to match the project bag, which was really fun. Um, I would love to do another collab like that in the future, but I'm just kind of like too um, nervous to really like put myself out there and approach people. I had Alicia approach me. She was put in contact with me through um, like a mutual internet acquaintance. Um, so I really probably should put myself out there instead of trying to, you know, just sit around and wait for the next opportunity to drop in my lap. But this was really, really cool for me. Um, you know, Yarn Inc. is a pretty big brand. And the fact that Alicia reached out to me was really, um, really flattering and very motivating at a time where I was really unsure about my business. So... I'm always very thankful to Alicia for kickstarting that for me. And then I'm looking at these and I have no idea. These are old. I don't know what yarn this is. <laughs> I know these are the ones that I stepped in paint in at some point. They had some paint on them. Um, and the pattern, I believe, is called the Celebration Socks. But... What I do remember is I didn't know how to do SSK slip slip knits properly at this point when I was knitting them, so they don't look like the celebration socks are supposed to look. Yeah, and these are a little bit felted up. Um, I was painting one day and I stepped up paint lid in them, so they've they've had a lot of love. Um, there's nothing wrong with them; they're still good. <laughs> I wish you could see the pile of socks; like it's this high. <laughs> beside me now I've got to fold all these and I'm done um these are quite old as well I don't wear them very often they're a bit tight I'm not sure what the pattern is I probably knit these like eight years ago I think I started them shoved them in a bag and then pulled them out a couple years later and finished them but they're really cute um like a zigzag pattern um, but all over color work it was really intense to knit and again I don't know you know, they feel like they don't stretch very much. They feel a little tight. I think these have also been in the dryer and they're a little felted. I should probably see if my mom wants them. Her feet are slightly smaller than mine. So sometimes if something doesn't come out right or I shrink it, I can give it to her. <laughs> uh, and then the last pair is pretty special. This is my only pair of hand spun socks. Oh, these are so pretty. This, um... So this is my hand spun. I was trying to be very, very careful and do a nice two-ply. You can see, though, 
as my plying went on, the colors matched up less and less, but that just means I have two really fun, funky socks. Uh, so this was roving from Sweet Georgia. I'm not sure on the colorway. I know there was bamboo fiber, which is why I thought that they would be a good choice for socks. And they're probably slightly, like a little bit heavier than a fingering weight yarn. But um, I'm not the most accomplished spinner. I would say I'm like, you know, an amateur. So I was really like, this was a big deal for me to be able to spin a yarn that was consistent enough to knit a pair of socks out of. And they're really fun. These are another ones that are another pair that I'm hesitant to use because they're so nice, which as I said earlier, that really doesn't make sense. <laughs> so um, I should get these back in rotation because I love them. Yay. So that's my empty, that's my whole box of socks. It's empty now. Um, I keep a few lavender pouches down kind of in amongst them. These are the lavender sachets that I sell in the shop. I fill them with um, organic, or sorry, not organic, but it's locally grown, organically grown. It's just not certified organic from the couch and valley and a little bit of rice. Uh, the rice acts like a kind of a moisture regulator and then the lavender um, is just, a good um, moth repellent and they just make things smell great and these are actually quite a few years old now these are some of the first ones I made um, I think it was back in 2019 2018 or 2019 yeah they're quite a few years old now and if you squish them all the scent just comes back um, so these are really nice long-lasting so I definitely recommend those if you're in an area where you have moth issues like I do uh, moths are not fun when they get into your stash. It's really, really upsetting. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've had it happen. So if you have, if you have closed moths in your area, that's something you might want to check out in my shop is the lavender pouches. And yeah, so that's pretty much it for knitting content. If you'd like to stick around for another few minutes, I have some project bags to show you and some lavender pouches. So I am doing an update in the Etsy shop on um, this following Friday, which is the 18th. And everything is Rifle Paper Company fabric. And I've got some canvas and I have some regular cotton fabric. And I've got some bags to finish up in the next few days, but I have some finished to show you as well. Um, but yeah, so I've done some lavender pouches. This is just like a cute little gold metallic floral and they have like a speckle on the back. These are like a little blue floral in the same pattern. And then the rest of these will match this week's project bag. So I have this really pretty floral with like a peach and metallic gold on the back. Um, this really nice dark burgundy floral with like a plum color on the back. I've got three of each of these. Um, I just was cutting up the bits and pieces I had left over after I cut project bags. This really beautiful blue floral with a speckle. Um, another one here. And I think these are my favorite of the week, this gray floral. So I have one drawstring bag in this gray floral that I'm gonna be making. That's, I didn't get a ton of that fabric. Um, and I have three of these little pouches as well. And then I've only finished the sock size and a couple medium drawstrings so far, but I will have four large zipper bags. And then as well, I will have five of the XL drawstring bags for the shop as well. But this is what's finished. I have these two. I used my cork leather tags on some of the bags this week. They were uh, by Brick Bubble, which is a um, Alberta company. So they designed those and printed them up. 
and then I have this is a medium drawstring and then this is a medium drawstring that I accidentally cut a little bit shorter <laughs> so I think I'll have this in the shop for just a little bit less because um, it's just not exactly the standard size but it's still a good size bucket like it's not that it's too small it'll still fit I think two to three skeins but it's just not uh it's not the size that it was supposed to be <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there <laughs> and then I have um, four rectangular sock size bags here and these are actually made out of canvas I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera um, so this is a thicker weight cotton linen canvas um, I do charge a little five dollars extra for my canvas bags because the fabric is more expensive um, but they're very very beautiful and so I have the rectangle sock size that are all finished here that you can see with really fun coordinating linings um, I love these rifle paper company prints this one is just oh this is actually like the canvas version of that gray that I was showing you so there is actually two of these gray ones and then yeah I used a lot of the speckle fabric this week because it just seemed to go so well uh, this one and then if you want to get an idea like I'm going to have each one of these prints that I show you one of each of these as well in um, it just says white in the XL drawstring size so that gives you an idea of what you can see in the shop so these are all going to be up in the shop on Friday I think these are not my colors but this might be my favorite bag so far of the week the yellow it just seems to really pop for me so I am really happy with these I love the rifle paper company fabric um, cotton and steel is made in Japan and it is just a really nice company really good quality fabrics so I hope that you are looking forward to this update I'm gonna have lots of stuff going in um, there's gonna be about probably 15 or 20 bags and I have 20 lavender pouches so um, thank you for everyone who's been shopping the updates I really appreciate your support and uh, yeah it's just a really great feeling so yeah that's pretty much all I have to show you today I hope that this was interesting to you I hope that you enjoyed checking out my box of socks and maybe get some ideas about what you would like to work on next maybe some new pattern ideas and yeah I think the next kind of in this series of going over my hand knits I did the shawl wall if you want to check that out I went through all the shawls up here um, a few months ago and showed all those off and then my next in that kind of series is going to be all my hand knit sweaters so I'm really looking forward to showing you all that I wanted to wait till I had worn most of them on the podcast first before I went through them all with you but uh, that will be coming up soon in the next few months so yeah I hope that you are all doing well I hope that you're enjoying this June this lovely June and uh, yeah I hope that you're safe and happy and that you know you're just enjoying life whatever it's bringing you these days so Thanks for hanging out with me and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye guys.